Hey guys, welcome to Allotronics, I'm Gregory and in this video we are going to take a look on the wind bridge oscillator we explored on the last video. This oscillator has automatic gain controller and a PLL loop. We also gonna see how we can be fooled by the oscilloscope. Take your coffee and come with me. Here we have the prototype and I'm calling this technique spider technique because it looks like a spider where the components crosses each other. So I started prototyping here at the center of the PCB, a normal wind bridge oscillator using a JFET op amp, some resistors and capacitors. A lot of people commented on the video, I'm sure there's an easy way to generate a constant frequency sine wave, very clean sine wave. And of course it exists, but this circuit was a design exercise was a design challenge for me and this is a very nice thing to do when designing when i designed this circuit i was reading this amazing book from bob Pease. so now you can understand why i use it as so analog approach and you also can understand why i prototype it using the spider technique take a look on the circuit on the bench of bob Pease here <laughs> To see the behavior of the circuit, I added a probe at the output, a frequency meter at the output, and also a probe measuring the 100 kHz from the crystal oscillator. Let's take a look on the oscilloscope. Take a look at these guys. We have the generated sine wave and the reference here, and we see that they are exactly in phase lock. We have the PLL, closure loop, servo action, adjusting the frequency of the oscillator to maintain phase lock with the reference signal. A very interesting behavior is seen when we turn off and turn on the circuit. Take a look. As we have two closure loop controls acting in simultaneous, we have the automatic gain controller and the phase locker loop. We can see the two controls fighting each other until the circuit stabilizes. Very, very interesting. And of course we are phase and frequency locked to the 100 kilohertz from the crystal and the output frequency is spot on. I have here on the channel a video talking about non-linearity and distortion. You can watch it clicking here on the balloon. It's a very interesting video that shows how the non-linearity is created on a circuit. But let's have a quick look on what is THD, total harmonic distortion. We have the wind bridge oscillator that I will draw here. And the idea behind this circuit is to generate a 100 kilohertz tone, a 100 kilohertz signal. And the main purpose of a wind bridge oscillator is to have a very well controlled total harmonic distortion, a very clean signal in its output. So here on the output of the oscillator, we expect to see a sine wave, a very clean sine wave. But how clean is this sine wave? When we are looking to the oscilloscope, it looked very, very clean. But on the time domain, it's very difficult to understand if a sine wave is pure or if it has harmonics or is pure content. So the main technique to analyze the behavior of an oscillator is to use a different domain to analyze the signal. If we take a very clean signal from the time domain, here we have time, and we take a look on the same signal from the frequency domain, from the frequency perspective. If the signal is very, very clean, we expect to see only one tone at the main frequency of the signal. In this case here, the main frequency is 100 kilohertz. So this picture I draw here is from an ideal oscillator. Any real circuit, as we saw on the video about non-linearity, link is in the description, any circuit has an amount of non-linearities. And non-linear behavior distorts the signal, generating new content, new frequency content at the output. So if we take a look on the output of the oscillator, we're gonna see other tones on the output. We also gonna see a 200 kilohertz tone, a 300 kilohertz tone, a 400 kilohertz tone, and so on. As we saw on the non-linearity video, these tones are generated by the non-linear behavior of the circuit. And the purity of a signal, how clean a signal is, can be measured with the ratio of the amplitude of the main tone, the tone we need on the output, over the other tones generated. 
over the amplitude of the other tones. If the harmonic content, these signals are called harmonic content because they are harmonic related to the main tone. This is the second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic, the fifth harmonic. They are integer multiples of the main frequency. And using the ratio between the amplitudes of the main tone and the harmonic content, we can have a measurement of how good how clean a signal is. If these tones are very low in comparison with the main tone, this is a very clean signal. If the harmonic content is very high in relation to the main tone, we have a system with a very high degree of non-linearity. Very, very interesting. And here we have total harmonic distortion. The ratio of the amplitudes of the harmonics over the amplitude of the main tone. This is the definition of total harmonic distortion. What's very important is that the way of measurement will change the result. So the way we define a measurement changes what we are measuring. So here on the total harmonic distortion formula, we see that we are using only the harmonic related terms. The second harmonic, this one, the third harmonic, this one, the fourth harmonic, this one. On the output of any oscillator, we also gonna see other tones that are not harmonic related to the main frequency. If we have a tone that in this case we're gonna call a spur or an unharmonic, let's say we have a spur here, this nonlinear term here is not considered on the total harmonic distortion formula. So this is very important, guys. The definition of the measurement changes how we look to the signal. So for an output like this one here, a better measurement would be this pure free dynamic range. That is the difference of the main tone to the highest is pure. This difference here is called is pure free dynamic range. And we also see that THD is not considering noise. This is very interesting and very important. We always need more than one point of view, more than one measurement to understand the real behavior of a circuit. For very low distortion measurements, we need to use a signal analyzer, a THD analyzer, or we also can use a spectrum analyzer. A spectrum analyzer would be a very nice tool to use to measure total harmonic distortion. But for this circuit we have here, we have a problem. The circuit was not designed to a fifth on load. So it can be a little problematic to measure THD when we don't have a low impedance output on the circuit. What we're gonna do now is try to measure THD using an oscilloscope and we're gonna see we're gonna be fooled by the oscilloscope on nonlinearity. The front end of the oscilloscope, the AD converter of the oscilloscope also have nonlinearities and it's gonna show an the measurement. Let's take a look. With the output signal on a digital oscilloscope, we can perform an FFT, a frequency domain transformation, to take a look on the spectrum on the frequency content of the signal. So let's do it here. Here we need to apply a math, enable the math signal. I already configured it and we right away see the main tone and the harmonic content. We also see that we have unharmonics is pures in non-harmonic related frequencies on the output. Very, very interesting. We can apply an average to the spectrum to reduce the noise floor of the frequency spectrum here, of the frequency measurement. So we can go to the measurement here, to the math, and we can apply an average to the output of the math, a 10 average count. Now we have the average spectrum and it is easy to see here on the frequency domain, all the, all the non-linearities. We have the second harmonic here, third harmonic here, fourth harmonic here, fifth harmonic here, and so on. We already see that this oscillator is not so clean as I thought. We can see that the difference between the higher harmonic here and the main tone, we can measure it. The difference here, the delta measurement is only 66 dB. So, okay guys, this is not a so clean oscillator. And having the amplitude of each harmonic, we can calculate the THD. This oscilloscope can do this automatically using a measurement. So let's enable the measurement here and we can add all the THD measurements. We have more than one THD measurement here. We're gonna understand now what it means. 
and we can also see the harmonic surge and the THDF, okay? Here the oscilloscope is listing all the harmonics found. We have, we have the fundamental, the third harmonic is the highest one, second, fourth, fifth, and all the other harmonics found. And here you have the automatic calculation of THD. And this is very, very important, guys. We have different values for THD here. Why we have different values? Because actually we have different ways of measuring THD. THD underscore F is measuring the THD using the voltages of the harmonics. THD underscore A is measuring the total harmonic distortion using the powers of the harmonics. So this number squared is THD underscore A. For audio applications, we commonly use the THDF using the voltage, as I shown on the whiteboard. And multiplying this value by 100, we see that we have a 0.5% THD oscillator. But we have a catch. Take a look on what happens if I change the vertical scale of the oscilloscope. The total harmonic distortion changes. The harmonics changes. We are actually measuring here the total harmonic distortion of the oscilloscope front end. And this is proved by changing the gain of the front end. When we change the gain, the harmonic distribution is changing. So in this case here, the measurement is affected by the measurement device. This is a real problem for very accurate measurements. So when I got the oscillator working, I discovered all the problems we saw on the last video. First of all, the output signal was saturating. So I got back to the prototype and I designed the automatic gain controller around the oscillator. This was four years ago. I was studying about automatic gain controllers, closed loop control. This was a very practical prototype. So I tried a lot of different different components, resistors and capacitor values to see the responses of the automatic gain controller. It was very nice to play around with the circuit. After I got a constant amplitude signal on the output, I was thinking in the possibility of adding phase locked loop control, a closed loop control to stabilize the center frequency, because I saw that the center frequency was oscillating around, briefed around the circuit. So changes in temperature were changing the values of the components, changing the output frequency. So here at the side, I added a two megahertz crystal, a frequency divider by 20 to get a 100 kilohertz signal. And I used an XOR as the phase comparator to generate the error signal to control one of the JFETs, changing the output frequency. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe to the channel and remember you can support the channel, become in a Patreon link on the description. I see you in the next video of All Electronics.